Today is the 33rd birthday of the 11th Panchen Lama, Gyundi Chukun Nima, the second highest figure in Tibetan Buddhism, who was abducted by the Chinese government on 17 May 1995 when he was just six years old. The incident took place three days after His Holiness the Dalai Lama recognized him as the 11th Panchen Lama. The Chinese government forcefully took him and his family members and Chattel Rinpoche to an undisclosed location and in the last 27 years, this is the only photo of 11 Penchen Lama that the world knows of. The Chinese government has roped off Penchen Lama's identity and hope of the Tibetan people. In today's episode, let's discuss on the importance of 10th and 11th Penchen Lama on Tibet and the reason behind his abduction. Let us pray for the Penchen Lama and all the Tibetan Buddhists in prison in China or missing or for following their faith. Human rights organizations have termed him the youngest political prisoner in the world. He reincarnates as a child somewhere on earth and traditionally a key person in the process of finding him is someone called the Panchen Lama. And when the Panchen Lama dies, the Dalai Lama plays a similar role in finding him. in 1995, the Chinese government, in a bid to win the hearts and minds of the Tibetans, selected Gelsen Nobu, a six-year-old boy from Nakchu, as the 11th Penchen Lama in Tibet. But many Tibetans revile him as a fake and consider him as a mere puppet of the Chinese government. The boy chosen by the Chinese government is not accepted by the Tibetan Buddhists. So the issue is much bigger than just looking at the Panchen Lama and where is he and how do we get him out. The issue is much bigger than that. So Panchen Lama for uh, Tibetan Buddhist society is extremely important in the sense that Buddhist society is organized uh, in a way that the political organization and societies are connected through the tenets of Buddhism. So in that sense, reincarnation plays an important and uh, uh, important religious and, and political uh, leadership in Tibetan society. So in that sense, uh, particularly uh, with the Tibetan government that was formed uh, in 17th century, uh, uh, Panchen Lama and His Holiness the Dalai Lama are extremely important both in temporal and spiritual uh, sense. Kuzuki, <laughs> Tarin 
so in order to uh, gain legitimacy, if they can uh, appoint a pension lama that they think uh, they can control, uh, it all rests on the fact that they can uh, somehow, um, somehow f uh, wrench legitimacy and enforce the legitimacy on, on the Tibetan people. So far, the case of Benjen Lama was discussed to the Working Group of Enforced and Involuntary Disappearances, Committee on the Rights of the Child, Interventions by the Special Rapporteur on Freedom of Religion and Belief. In 2015, the Chinese government spokesperson stated that the Benjen Lama is being educated, living a normal life, growing up healthy and does not wish to be disturbed. And more recently says he is a college graduate with a job. These are the only information Chinese government provided about the 11th Pension Lama. To understand the Chinese government's treatment of the 11th Pension Lama, we must understand the lives of his predecessor, the 10th Pension Lama, Losan Tile Lundup Chögegelsen, who was the contemporary of the 14th Dalai Lama. He spent the initial years in Tibet together before the Chinese invasion of Tibet in 1959. The 10 Benjen Lama stayed back during the troubling times in Tibet while His Holiness the Dalai Lama and 80,000 of Tibetans went to exile in India. Nizu <laughs> And me was Suji, and he carsna, Benjir Muchi, and your Muchi, Lokjube, Sandy Cheris, Big Tabla, Nekapchi, Benjir Muchi, and Ranjun to be doing letter beans. Your Muchi, Kuzapuchi, your Muchi, Shoto Perua, and Big Tabdi, Benjir Machines, or two secrets, good, 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 Nedan, Tender Chatter. Mapjunga Guparat, Mapjunga Gutu Teparat, Tender Chatter. The period of 1960s saw a massive destructions and terrible times in Tibet under the hands of brutal forces of the Chinese government. In 1962, seeing the poor state of the country and witness to all the unjust treatment of the Tibetan people, Benjen Lama put forward the most daring 70,000 charter petition directed to the Mao Zedong, critiquing the Chinese government's policies in Tibet. Uh, the 70,000 character petition is an extraordinary document and you can study this document through various lands. Uh, most of the scholars that have studied this document so far have been, um, have been uh, describing this document as a sort of a petition, a sort of a report uh, concerning the plight of the Tibetan people. But uh, for me, I think uh, if you look at this document, you can see this document as a historical document or as an ethnographic document. So what he was able to do what I mean by historical document is that if, um, during the democratic reform uh, period in Tibet, Tibet has seen, uh, Tibet has witnessed an unprecedented scale of destruction of Tibetan culture, people's lives, and and uh, and, and cultural heritage at the time. And uh, and if you wanted to study that period, we are left with very little documentary evidence to study that period. So in that sense, that document is an important historical document. Uh, what I mean by ethnographic document is that he's, while documenting, this doc, uh, while documenting this report, he went around to, he went around 
pretty much most parts of Tibet, and not only in Tibet, but he was able to go to many other parts of the so-called minority regions to be able to study and look for himself and record what was happening. So if you look at it from that perspective, it is an ethnographic document. So uh, his study of those Tibet, of those uh, people that was undergoing such turmoil, he was able to document it. And it is extraordinary in the sense that nobody in the party Marxist-Leninist structure was able to question Mao Zedong. He was Mao Zedong as power holder at the time. So he was, since the fall of Peng Deng Hui, he is perhaps the first um, person within that structure to be able to, uh, to question uh, the way uh, the leadership was actually organizing in this region. Is it digging? Is it some hurry? Pim Midic Samitan, Siju Remado Vegi, Shidegi, Manzuju, said the Yagore, Sindu Shujatan in the Machavores. Yena and Keranzo, Kana, Yezi Maji, Duba, Lebun, Chegi Machi, Dani, Pim Midic Samisuki, Terence, the Cheshi Redus, Migu Member Redus, or Dinja Imbasson, the Tetsa and Yena Tigmedus, the Motu Gomba and Jimaris, the Sanya Parala Karsna. ตาอยู่ตาสันเนี่ยสิจอรอออดีปาราสันเนี่ยกิเป็นปฏิจจุกิตาจิเอ่อซิจูลอกลอกบาเพจิเจจูติเดนจิเรสเจซันดิกเน
The search for the 11th pension Lama Gendu Chuginima still looms large, and Tibetans and Buddhists around the world are hopeful to see him one day soon. I the we still should uh, ask the independent bodies of the United Nations and international community to be able to engage with the Chinese government and we still need to ask uh, and question about his paper because at the end of the day the burden of proof is with the uh, Chinese government. Uh, they are the ones who should be informing the world about his whereabouts because they were involved um, involved in his abduction. So the burden of proof uh, lies in their hands. So we should continue to question and, and use any space available to uh, question any kinds of rights abuses in Tibet and then, then particularly with the question of, of the pension lama.